Hey guys, today we're doing a seafood boil. We're by Steve and Sherry, good friends, and Bruce and his family also. And some of my kids, the rest, don't know where they are. <laughs> but um, this is the authentic, original seafood boil. It's not that drama crap you see on YouTube and all those places. This is how it's done. We are heading straight to the pot. Old Bay. Old Bay. And some crab oil. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take a quick peek because I wanna see what you got going on in here. Woo! Now, 15 minutes after potatoes go in, then I would go ahead and add the corn. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to, since we've got a lot in here, we're gonna go ahead and remove the corn and potatoes. They have cooked in the crab bowl, so they're seasoned. Oh, we added bay leaves too. If you want original Cajun style stuff, <laughs> you gotta come to the people who know how to make it. <laughs> yeah. Anybody can go on YouTube and Google something up and look how to make it. But if you want authentic stuff, you gotta come to where people have cooked it for 40 years, 50 years, and even learn, even learn from their mother and grandmother how to cook this stuff. My family has always cooked this is a uh, all the time thing. Yes, all I believe you. That's why that's why I was very happy you invited me to come for dinner. I knew you would like it. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. And look, I even bought the kids to look. Look, there's Bruce and his family, and Steve, as usual, just waiting on the food to finish. <laughs> so we're gonna kebab the shrimp, and all we're gonna do is add the Old Bay seasoning to it. Just are you going to put this on the grill? I'm going to put it on the grill, yeah. Even though it's got the shell on it, the flavor will still be imparted onto it. And what are you doing with all this stuff over here? This is going to go in our crab bowl. Okay. Actually, the andouille is going to go on the grill. The kaneka is going to go in the crab bowl. Um, I think we're going to put these on the grill. And also, boudin hmm. is going to go on the grill. This is actually pork seasoned Cajun style with rice and it's in a casing and it's really very flavorful. Very good on the grill. As many as you can get on it. And then there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put So you're just using Old Bay? Just Old Bay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it. Nice. Nice shrimp, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Make sure we got everything that's going on the. All right. Oh. Are you gonna take this to the grill? We're gonna go to the grill with this. Oh. So while this pot is going right here. Wow. This is the boudin. We're gonna put this on the top shelf because boudin, because it's in a casing, <laughs> it tends to wanna to split. So this is the shrimp with Old Bay going on. We're going full Cajun style today. Oh, Cajun. Nice. The grill is it heated up to really high and then we turn it down to low. Miss Sherry, how long have you been cooking? From what age did you start cooking? I was probably cooking since I was eight or nine. Mm -hmm. Helping in the kitchen. And this is the same way you've been doing it? Same way. Same way you're going to do that pot, right? Is that why Steve fell in love? Steve! Is it because of the cooking you fell in love? Yes. And? And desserts. <laughs> I'm going to show you how Miss Sherry works. Bare feet. She fishes bare feet and she works around the house bare feet. So now we're going to do, we always do crusty bread with our bowls. So all I do was get a, a, any type of crusty bread and put a butter and garlic and parsley and then we're just smeared on. So then after I do that, so just go ahead and wrap them up. 
Oh, you wrapping them and wrap put them in the grill? Them, wrap them and put them in the grill. Mm, see? Double wrap it. I thought you were just going to open it and put it on the grill, like, face down. We will at the end. Okay. We will at the end to get some of them to get a toast on it, not all of them that way. So wrap it up. But again, when we're ready to get ready to serve, we're going to open it up and we're going to open face it and we're going to get some grill marks on it. So even though all this stuff's on here, just go ahead and put it on top. It keeps it directly off the flame, but it actually lets you have some of the flavors that still come in it. Mm -hmm. But when we open it up and get the grill marks, you're still going to get all of the shrimp flavors, the drippings, and all that. Getting ready to add our seafood. Oh. We've got our potatoes out, the corn out, and we're about to add our seafood to it. Let's go. Look at that. Who is going to get by? Somebody put their hand in there. <laughs> As a kid, we would these these were in dishes, and yeah. we would go and catch them. And believe it or not, we do it barefooted. Stir them up, Stella. Stir them up. Give them a little. All right, now let's stir them up. So Miss Sherry's gonna wash the crawdads out or the crawfish out a few times because these are gonna go into the pot live, Miss Sherry. Yeah. Okay, so we want to, yeah, she's just going to clean them up a couple of times and then we're going to put them in the pot. Are you going to hold one of them? <laughs> Not bear. Not, Not bear. me. Here, let's the George for later. Let go! Oop. Are you guys going to come hold some crawfish and put it in here? Grabbing on. <laughs> oh, one, one hit the meat. Here, go ahead and dump that. Right. I don't want to grab him. Mm -hmm. Grab some of you. There it is. Okay, Put him in the pot. Go ahead. Yeah, once you get on behind the bag, they can't grab you. This is what they're going to do with a crab. You're going to put the crab in, hole in the pot. There we go. If you want authentic seafood boil, Cajun style, this is it. Oh, I have a really good story. One time me and my Nana were doing these and one of the crab cloth came off in her purse. <laughs> so like all week she was smelling like a seafood spunky smell. Shrimp will go in very last there anymore. I can't spot it. Uh, put the crab in there. We're gonna go ahead and put this crab in there first. Okay. Yeah. Because the shrimp will be very tender if we only leave it in for like a few minutes. Okay. The shrimp holding on. <laughs> and they are fumbling with the shrimp. Please. That's the best part going in right now. Oh wait a minute. You're allergic. You can't touch this. I can't eat it. She can't, can't eat, eat it. it. Okay. But if it touches you. I don't have an allergic reaction. Okay, I just can't ingest it. Yep. That's my only issue. Oh, so it's time to turn the, the shrimp. Uh, shrimp. Yeah. So we're getting. So let's go ahead and turn them. Mm -mm. This is our friend daughter over there. Did you already turn this one? Yeah. Bruce and her mom. Do you like cooking too, Stella? Lot at home. Nice. Not exactly. Well, I grill a lot of steak hmm. and like pork chops and stuff, but I also bake and stuff. Nice. Nice. My favorite's making chicken alfredo. Awesome. We are taking out everything now. Tabasco to it. Well, we actually might let add Tabasco as each person likes it. Yeah. Some of them. My mom them. loves hot sauce. I do too. But Steve does. Well, I have to make you guys hot sauce. If you like hot sauce, I should make hot sauce. I know. I love your hot sauce. You need to do that for us. My mom would probably love to try that. She makes hot sauce all the time with our blender and everything. Hmm. 
since we got a new one. Oh. Ketchup. I want like I want recycle. Uh, yes, right there. I don't measure for this. I just do. That's so. the best measurement. That's how I cook. <laughs> Just add the horseradish to it. Mom will just eat some. <laughs> what do you think? It's Good. not what you're used to, right? We are about to go eat. Ooh, the crab's holding on. They're still alive. Ah. They are still alive. <laughs> I'm just joking. I don't think Mr. Steve would either. Like when I was there, drop it. Yeah. I'd keep it as some. Well, because of the G's, put it up more. Make sure, oh let's God. just do uh, the bread to the side. Click. Just the bread like. Woo! Is this juice, is it? Here, just put bread in there. Okay. And then just pour this pour it down. Oh, tin foil. That's what a boil looks like. Yeah, it's monkey. Um, What's that? Oh, this is that's the greens. Green. I'm actually going to put some of these on the side. Do you want this over here too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. This is the way we traditionally, and this has tasso, which is a Cajun uh, spice uh, ham. Uh, bowl is we've got greens from the garden, we've got mustard, turnip, collard greens, we have kebab, shrimp with Old Bay seasoning, the bowl, the uh, crab bowl with shrimp, blue crab, kaneka sausage, crawdads, so somewhere in here, crawdads, and corn and red potatoes on the grill. We have andouille, we have boudin. What's up with Stephen? He <laughs> He's hungry. He's hungry. Um, and we've got the garlic bread, the garlic crusty bread. I think that was it. We have cowboy caviar, which is candied jalapenos. So, if anybody doesn't know, the this is a female crab, and this is a male crab. You can tell by. And her coloring's a little bit different, although you can't, she's a lot lighter when they cook. You can see a difference when they're not cooked. We're going to walk Miss Sherry's garden, and yes. she's going to walk, tell us everything she's got, or most of the stuff that she's got. Most of it. Yeah. This is a poblano pepper. This plant is actually three years old. Didn't you give me some of this the other day? I did. Oh. You're going to have to make some stuffed peppers with it. I will. Yeah, I'll let you pick some too. Okay. Uh, we've got, actually right here, uh, Texas tarragon. Use it for good, good for seasoning. And we've got the peppers, basil. You guys would not believe what I found in her yard. Suriname cherry. I didn't know. Oh my. I didn't Planet. know. George is their nice puppy. <laughs> yeah, she yeah she throws seeds for. Actually, I can't grow a tomato in in Florida. In Alabama, we could. In Mississippi, we could. This right here was also planted by George. A stray seed. Look at it. Wow, beautiful, look at tomato. Beautiful tomatoes. Yes. I don't even know what kind it is. This right here is passion fruit vine from seed. Uh, if I understand correctly, they have to be three years old before they produce any type of fruit. They have not yet. Is that your small olive tree that yeah, you had like three years ago? That? Yes. Take a look. You gotta be joking. This tree was so small when Michelle bought this tree. And look at it. It's got olive olives. on the tree. Producing olives now. <laughs>
I know where to get my oil from now. Yes, this is uh, our Kalamanan tree. This is about actually three years old, and we're gonna make jelly with it this year. You ever had that before? Kalamanan? Have you ever had Kalamanan? No. You wanna try it? Sure. The uh, the Kalamanan, you can eat the whole thing. There's seeds in it. You don't peel it. Oh. Okay. The uh, the flesh is sweet, but the inside is sour. Mm -hmm. Is that the first time you're having it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. First it's time having good. It. Nice. So you, when you eat it all together, it kind of blends together. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go this one yeah, pick some for your dad or your mom. Uh, is this your lemongrass too? Lemongrass, yes. Right. Divided. This is the one I divided. Yeah. It's actually doing really good. Mm -hmm. What type of bananas are these, Miss Sherry? These are Chiquita bananas, and they actually do produce. Uh, we've had, we get them. There in the wintertime, I think. Hmm. And look how small the trees are. Wow. They do produce our moringa tree. This is the first one that we ever had. And this one's about, oh, it's probably about three years old now. I wonder where you got it from. I got it from <laughs> our friend Robbie. <laughs> But Robbie look at it. told us all about this, and I'm just so amazed with this tree. But look at look at it. Yeah. Look at the base of that tree. And look, Miss Sherry and Steve have more tree from this same. They got a lot of they got a lot of pods from this last year. Yes. Or sigen as we call it. This is a black mulberry. And over here is a just a regular fig. Which figures is the white one, huh, Michelle? This one, no, it's um. I have the brown turkey fig. Which one do you have? It's not a turkey fig. Okay. I don't have the turkey fig yet. However, Nikolai. Yes, Nikolai with a, with a persimmon. Yeah, he gave us these two right here, and I'm not sure exactly what they are, but this one and this one right here. Now let someone tell us what it is. Look at the leaves. And maybe someone can drop us a comment and tell us what it is, right? If it's a right, different, if yeah. it's a different variety. I would love to know. Yeah. Come on, it guys. grows differently too. The habit. Oh. Yeah, look at it. It's it just decided to shoot straight up and yeah, then then good. send the leaves up the top. This is a green stem Malabar, and these are the 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 green bush whole of the green beans. So green stem Malabar. If you guys look at it, it's just like what we call poi bachi or spinach. I just saw it in there, Sherry. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I just the Did one, you, the one behind there. Do you see it? The one you yeah. have at the back. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll show you the red one over there. Inside. This is a just a table grape, and now it's gonna have grapes this year. They're growing very well. So, have you ever had dragon fruit? Yeah. Mm -mm. This is our dragon fruit. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, we had dragon fruit already. We learned this about year. these from Ravi too. <laughs> Robbie happens to be me, okay? Good. <laughs> One of them is called a lemon cucumber, and the other is just a pickle bush. And right over here is squash, and there's actually two different squashes. There's straight neck um, yellow squash, and there's Peter Pan squash, which is the white. It, yeah. yeah. My grandma has a whole bunch yeah. of cucumbers and squash in her garden. That's what that is. We have is. plenty of seeds for you to regrow. Oh, nice. And right here underneath my makeshift shade, is arugula and there is a lettuce that grows in the summertime here it's uh, oak leaf lettuce and there's oak leaf growing down there too and and those pots right there are pigeon feet peas and Robbie I saw his video and I wanted to try them so we went over and picked them and then he gave us some seed and that's what's coming up from the seed and we'll plant those in the yard here soon too. On the TP is scarlet runner beans. You can see the scarlet flowers. They'll be producing really soon too. Hmm. What do you use? What do you use that to do? The scarlet runner yeah. beans. Just like you would, any dish you would use green beans, even the pigeon peas, dishes like that. And right here, first time ever growing corn. So you said your grandmother had corn. We're growing corn. It's actually peaches and cream corn from seed. And you can see where I've harvested. We've got collard, mustard, and turnip greens, so we'll be having those for dinner tonight. Carrots. Ready to see some carrots? Let's see. 
It's on? Let's see. Check that out. That's what he called organic. This is organic. Hmm. We'll be planting these again this summer and they'll grow over the winter and they'll be ready to harvest in February. Mm -hmm. February. I'm going to wash these off, Stella, and you're going to cut the stems off immediately because after you harvest these from the garden, these stems tend to draw Take the, the sugar, sugar out of it. So that's why sometimes if you see carrots with the stem still on it, in the store, they sit there for a while and they're not as sweet, so you're going to wash them and you're going to cut the stems off to stop that process. Oh, and remember we made this last night? Oh my word. The banana pudding. Look at that. That's going to be a nice dessert. So we're making southern banana pudding and we're going to make everything from scratch including the pudding. And the pudding is going to be three quarters of a cup of sugar, two tablespoons of cornstarch. Cornstarch is to make the pudding. Three cups of milk. I use two percent milk. You don't really miss the fat in it. It will still set up. And then you're going to cook it over low heat for about 30 minutes until it gets thick. Constantly stirring so that it doesn't burn. After it comes to a bowl, um, just keep always keep an eye on it mm -hmm. and get it to the thickness that you like. And it actually looks, you know, it's pretty thick. So I'm going to go ahead and turn I'm gonna it off. I'm going to bring the camera right over here so you can All right. see. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off now. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the eggs. I've got my gloves on. Why are you, why are you wearing the gloves? because I'm going to separate these by hand, so you want to make sure it just stays clean. Oh, okay, okay. And we're going to We won't try not to break the yolk. So there's Are you going to use a yolk too? Everything's going to be used, yes. The yolk is going to go into the pudding. going to do is we're going to temper the pudding by adding a little bit right there. Yes. Tempering, so just add a little bit more of the hot liquid. Mm -hmm. Tempering means that you're adding hot to the cold a little bit at a time to bring the yolks up to temperature. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you added the yolks right into the hot pudding, it would curdle mm. and cook. Now, how long have you been making this, Miss Sherry? Since I was a teenager. Oh. Grew up making this. We grew up eating banana pudding, but I'll tell you what. I had a brother and a sister, and my brother hated bananas. So mama would always make him a separate bowl with no bananas in it. So somebody was spoiled when they were growing up. Somebody was spoiled when they were growing up, and it was him. <laughs> it was Don. Okay, so I'm feeling the temperature. It's pretty hot. I'm gonna add it just a little bit more, just to make sure. So now everything that we put in here is the same temp. So we're going to put it back in here. Off. And then we're going to add, at this point, is when you add in the two ounces of real butter. Mm. Real butter is important, I learned, because the margarine is too oily and it will not set up and it'll be really runny. So we've added that in. And what's this now? This is actually vanilla butter bakery emulsion. Okay. Uh, I'd use, but this is vanilla butter emulsion, not extract. Hmm. It's very condensed and a, a strong, really nice flavor. So now I'm gonna bring it up again and cook it a little bit more. 
Gonna bring I've got to get me one of these little stoves. It's unbelievable. I love it. Oh my god! I have it's so abandoned. Easy and convenient. I've abandoned our stove for this. Wow. I just prefer it. Okay, so we're gonna let it come to a boil again and thicken up a little bit more. Um, <laughs> Uh, I didn't tell Bruce a specific time. So. Now, they don't want to tell me what they're cooking, so <laughs> please. Surprise. Oh, my God. How about around 6? What? He needs to be here a, a little earlier. 5.30. Okay. 5.30. Yeah, I'll do 5.30. You're going to find out some real redneck cooking. Oh, my God. How we really do it down south. Uh, Florida is not really considered down south. It's south, but not south. It's south, but not south. It's not deep south. Al lower Alabama, lower Mississippi, and Louisiana is south. Okay. So, the condensed milk is the secret ingredient for a banana pudding. My banana pudding. It's going to be sweet and good. And then, cream cheese. Cream cheese at room town. We're going to take the pudding. And we're going to transfer it to. I'm going to bring the camera in close so you okay. can see what it is. Transfer it to the flying tiger. And the secret ingredient condensed milk, mm -hmm. a whole 15, 14 ounce can, I think it was. It's custard, but down south we don't use custard, we use pudding. And cream cheese. That's good for you. I'm just going to let it spin until it's no longer lumpy. I need to go taste this, Miss Harry. Alright. Tell me if I need to add anything or if you like it or don't like it. I think I need seconds. <laughs> Is it sweet it's enough? Good. It's good. <laughs> Tell us what we're going to do now. Okay, so we've already mixed it up, so this part is done. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, pour it, do our bananas, our cookies, the wafers, and then we're going to make the meringue. And we're going to use the egg whites? We're using the egg whites, quarter cup of sugar, and that's it. Okay. Can't wait to see that one. Yeah. Now we're going to chop the bananas. So now we're going to put our vanilla wafers into the bottom and go ahead and pour just a layer of the pudding. And then lay your bananas. Go ahead and put just a little bit more. I like a lot of vanilla wafers in it, so. And then, of course, you have to put it on the side too. Sorry guys, I live here too. <laughs> Help yourself. Last layer of pudding on top. And I'm just going to take this and go home with it now? Yep. Oh. Have it tonight. <laughs> no, we have to wait. My word. They're good. Better when it's cooled and setting overnight because all the flavors kind of marry together. So now we're going to make the meringue. Let me come close and see what you, this magic you're doing now. Okay. These are the egg whites from the eggs. So four egg whites. And they are room temp. And this is a quarter cup of just granulated sugar. So 
you're gonna whip it until you get, until it does that, then it's ready. So if it sticks, if it sticks to the yarn. Six so. is ready. Stiff Peaks is what it's called. Mm -hmm. That is ready. Okay. Are you gonna put it on the, on the um, We're gonna put pudding. it onto the banana pudding. It's got, it's mm -hmm. got, it's got some sugar in it. Mm -hmm. oh, nice. Good. Okay. So, then, just put it on top. See how much four egg whites makes? Really good. I can't talk because I'm eating my bread. He's got a <laughs> mouthful of bread. Now the pudding needs to set overnight and we will torch the meringue. And now we're gonna brulee it, torch it. Just refrigerate it. Thanks to Miss Sherry and Stella for helping out with this dish. We all enjoyed it. and hope to see you in my next video soon.